Good afternoon, fellow iStaters. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines you may have missed for Wednesday, February 28th, 2018, and this is episode 35. You give us 20 minutes, and we'll give you headlines that aren't dominated with fear porn. We'll give you headlines of awareness, hope, action, and yes, Maybe a little lulls. And today, yes, we do have your lulls of the day. So don't you fear. If you're watching on YouTube, you missed the opening of the show where you would have seen me fumbling and stumbling around as I try to get my stuff in order. And you'll also miss the very end, which you can only hear if you watch live on my personal Facebook page, Paul Gordon. And the image of the profile matches the image of this show. And if you're watching live on Facebook, don't forget to stay tuned. Because I will respond to the comments after the YouTube part of the show is over. So remember, you guys know the drill. I think I've been threatening you with me going fetal if I don't get comments. Well, now I'm going to threaten you with a personal message of me singing a Radiohead song totally over the top. I will send that to your Facebook message again and again until you listen to it. If you're watching on YouTube... Join me on Facebook so next time you don't miss the full show. Today's show is titled, Cry Me a Gun Control River, You Racist White Male. And you can get show notes at isheadlines.com or check out the link to the show notes page in the description for both uh, Facebook live stream and the YouTube video. Or, or you can go to istate.tv slash h035. And as if there aren't enough options for you, you can also find our audio podcast show on iTunes and Stitcher by searching for iState. And usually they show up about two or three hours after I post them, which is about usually about a half hour after the show is done and posted on YouTube. And on today's episode of Headlines You May Have Missed, Gun Control Tear Tears Tears. Gun Control Tears hurt BLM, ISIS hearts Turkey, quantum communicating, Catalonia's retreat, and more. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here are your headlines you may have missed all 20 minutes worth. Florida teen gun grabbers hurt ignored BLM activists. That's right. That's a hard sentence to understand, but let's walk that through. The Florida teen gun grabbers, what did they do? They hurt. Who do they hurt? They hurt ignored BLM activists. And this is where we get the title for our show, which is, of course, Cry Me a Gun Control River, You Racist White Male. So it seems that the Black Matter activists and I want to qualify this and say this is not, there is no monolithic Black Modern, Ma Lives Matter activist voice. So this is just some of them. I don't want to represent all of the BLM with these guys. So they're not too happy about all the attention that the, I'm going to call them the Florida shooting teen tear and shriek activists are getting. After all, they've been crying out for years now in the hopes of facilitating political change with little to show for their efforts. Ironically, or I'm going to say closer to the truth tragically, and I mean that very seriously, the Black Lives Matter activists, the ones expressing some degree of hurt, disappointment, or anger at the special treatment being given to the Florida shooting teen tear and shriek activists, they're making sure to virtue signal their solidarity with the Florida shooting team tear and shriek activists efforts to essentially facilitate police state change throughout the land. That's right. Even as they push to get people to recognize the corruption of police departments that unfairly target them due to the color of their skin, these black matters these Black Lives Matter activists are standing in solidarity with the Florida shooting teen tear and shriek activists. And this is uh, 
This is uh, in response to Oprah's tweet. This is about Oprah calling for the police day. Uh, Charlene Carruthers, National Director of Black Youth Project 100, one of the groups involved in the protests that sprang out of the 2014 police shooting of unarmed teenager Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri, tweeted, and he, you see in the irony here, I promise y'all I'm happy for these young people. I just know how so many young people have put their lives on the line over the past five years. We're rarely compared to freedom riders and recipients of such public support. I shouldn't be bothered, but I am. Yeah. They're, 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 as the writer in this article from the Chicago Tribune writes, it isn't that they want to take any credit away from the courageous young people in Florida. And the courageous young people, these young people are using their tears, they're using the bodies of the dead to try to, to uh, hasten the arrival of a police state. That's not courage. Not, not in my book. Indeed, their vigilance in standing up for tighter gun control measures is admirable and welcomed. But shouldn't we now, This uh, pay very close attention to this next bar, but shouldn't we also pay attention when young people express their pain and frustration over the violent killings of unarmed African-American children and adults at the hands of unscrupulous police officers? Yes, we should. And, you know, we shouldn't work to try to disarm the very people that they may actually be oppressing if they are oppressing them let's say if they are oppressing them then why the hell are you saying that it's cool to disarm the people that are being oppressed yeah i think that you should study the history of uh, the, the racist history of gun control and if you go to the show notes and you get to this article you can read more because i've written more about this and uh, you can also find a video uh, that we did, uh, not this past Monday, but the Monday before that on East Daily Monday, where we did a uh, pretty lengthy report on the, on the secret racist history of gun control and the violent aftermath. Turk Reich's Afrin invasion is good for ISIS. America's decision to not fundamentally challenge the bloodlust of the Turk Reich as it prepared to invade Afrin has dire consequences. Now that Afrin is being invaded, the once reliable American allies in the fight against the brutal killing machine that ISIS, that is ISIS, has been lost. So rather than fighting ISIS, the Kurdish fighters, uh, they're they're leaving to go and defend Afrin from an even more ruthless killing machine in the making, the Turk Reich. And this is from the New York Times. Amid Turkish assault, Kurdish forces are drawn away from U.S. fight with ISIS. The United States-led campaign to hunt down the last pockets of Islamic state militants in Syria has lost its most effective fighting partner, Kurdish forces that are newly focused on a Turkish assault in what American military officials fear will stall a critical phase of the offensive and leave open the door for hundreds of foreign fighters to escape. Good plan, good idea, good good, good job, Trump administration, good job, State Department, good job, the lot of you. You'll remember in the same way that uh, we remember Neville Chamberlain and the other enablers before the rise of Hitler. Good freaking job. And now to something cheerful. One quantum particle can facilitate two-way communications. So researchers out of the Austrian Academy of Science has developed a theory that it is possible to create a device that could both send and receive messages at the same time, making two-way communications through a single particle a theoretical possibility. And that particle would be a quantum particle and this is from sciencenews.org uh let's see using a single photon or particle of light two people can simultaneously send information to one another scientists report in a new paper a pair of papers the feat relies on a quick quirk of quantum mechanics wow that's another one of those sentences quirk of quantum mechanics quirk of quantum i can't do it 
If you can do it, you let me know in the comments if you could say it. it just three times fast, Quirk of Quantum Mechanics. If you could say that three times fast, let me know. Uh, uh, anyway, the fact re the, re the, the feat relies on a quirk of quantum mechanics superposition, the phenomenon through which particles can effectively occupy two spaces at once. How cool is that? That is, that is awesome. That see, see, there's, there's all, all, all kinds of great things happening out there in the world today. Has Catalonia given up on Puigdemont? And now another downer of a story. I, I know. So it seems the resistance to Spain has either softened or is regrouping. Only time will tell which is the case. But one thing is for sure, the independence leaders in Catalonia are preparing to move on without political exile, Carle Puigdemont, as they look to find an alternative presidential candidate, having given up on the remote presidency idea, as well as the idea that they could negotiate with Madrid for a return of the exiled Puigdemont. Micro drone swarm, automated cyber war, and more dangers of AI. Look out, everybody! Prepare yourselves, brace yourselves. The dark side of AI is here. At least according to one study called the Malicious Use of Artificial Intelligence, Forecasting, Prevention, and Mitigation. According to the report, some of the things we have to fear are autonomous swarms of micro-drones, yay, and automated self-aware cyber attacks, yay. Now, just so everybody knows, I, for one, welcome my robot overlords. Of course, I mean, <laughs> everybody knows that. I've been documenting it as much as possible, just in case they win, just in case they win. So this is from CNBC. Humanity needs to better prepare for the rise of dangerous artificial intelligence. So says a report from 26 technology experts. Losers. I'm just kidding. They're not. They're not losers. They're 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 pessimistic neural twats. Can I say that on radio? Well, this isn't real radio, but let's pretend it is. If it was a real radio, I don't think I could say that. But since it's not, I'm going to continue to call them neural twats. Uh, uh, including the nonprofit OpenAI, the university. Well, I'm not going to read all the places. It's a bunch of stuff, man, including the EFF. Come on, man, the EFF. That's the Electronic Frontier Foundation. The report titled The Malicious Use of Artificial Intelligence Forecasting Prevention and Mitigation was published Tuesday. Some of the highlights here. AI Jeez. will allow the automation of tasks involved in digital cyber attacks that will make those offenses easier to carry out, larger and more efficient. The authors, now see here, well, here's a typo, and I just want to let you know this is their typo, not mine. It says they authors, it should say the authors. Ha! I'm not the only one who makes typos. The authors expect new varieties of attacks using speech synthesis for impersonization, impersonation and automated hacking too. In the physical realm, using AI to automate tasks involved in drone and autonomous weapons attacks may expand the threats associated with these attacks. I am going to tell you that for every, I'm going to say for every potential threat uh, that AI may cause, that somebody will be using AI to create counters to those threats. So I'm not worried, man. I'm not worried. Like I said, I welcome my robot overlord, so I'm definitely not, definitely not worried. The looming possibility of a Greek Turk Reich war. So a report from the Gatestone Institute suggests that Turkey, from its ideological perspective, must invade Greek islands to work towards claiming the greater Turk Reich that not only Erdogan, but even the opposition parties in Turkey desire. And this is, again, from the Gatestone Institute. There is one issue in which Turkey's ruling, I'll just say the ruling party, and its main opposition, I'll just say party, are in complete agreement. The conviction that the Greek islands are occupied Turkish territory and must be reconquered. So strong is this determination that the leaders of both parties have openly threatened to invade the Aegean. 
The only conflict on this issue between the parties is in competing to prove which is more powerful and patriotic and which possesses the courage to carry out the threat against Greece. While the CHP is accusing President Erdogan's AKP party of enabling Greece to occupy Turkish lands, the AKP is attacking the CHP, Turkey's founding party, for allowing Greece to take the islands through the 1924 Treaty of Lausanne, the 1932 Turkish-Italian Agreements, and the 1947 Paris Treaty. Uh, I'll just skip uh, uh, a little bit down here. To realize his, Erdogan's, ultimate goal of leaving behind a legacy that surpasses that of all other Turkish leaders, Erdogan has set certain objectives for the year 2023, the 100th anniversary of the establishment of the Turkish Republic, and 2071, the 1,000-year anniversary, anniversary of the 1071 Battle of Manzikert, during which Muslim Turkic jihadists from Central Asia defeated Christian Greek Byzantine forces in the Armenian highland of the Byzantine Empire. The idea behind these goals is to create nationalistic cohesion towards annexing more, annexing more land to Turkey. Yeah, it's the Liebenschram. They're, they're, they they want to give the, the, the superior Turks land to prosper and grow in. Yeah. That's why I call them the Turk Reich, just in part. Back to some, well, I don't know if this is good news. It's interesting news. Facebook tracks suicidal thoughts for your own good. Facebook really doesn't want you to leave this platform. I mean, they really, really don't want you to leave this platform. They're super serious about keeping you liking, sharing, and screeching madly at your screen as you attempt to correct yet another person was wrong on the internet about something. I know I do that all the time, and I'm right. I'm always right. They want to, not really, they want to keep you so badly that they've developed an AI program to identify when you're at risk of suicide, and they're notifying others of your suicide risk in the hope that you'll be saved before you ever attempt to leave Facebook. Uh, no, no, before you attempt to commit suicide, because it's about that. That's what they're, they want you to live as long as you stay on Facebook. So uh, this is from CNBC. Over the last month, uh, this is uh, Facebook. Who, who is this? Uh, oh, the company statement. Over the last month, we've worked with first responders on over 100 wellness checks based on reports we received via our proactive detection efforts. Facebook now says the enhanced program is flagging 20 times more cases of suicidal thoughts for content reviewers and twice as many people are Five receiving minutes. Facebook's suicide prevention support materials. The company has been deploying the updated system in more languages and improving suicide prevention in Instagram, though tools there are at an early stage of development. It's always good when they work to try to save us all. That's that's what it's all about right there. Can't believe I forgot to turn my ringer down. I, I blame the Russians. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is your moment of lulls, your lulls of the day. Eagles defend Swiss airports from drones. So the Swiss are making good use of their resident eagles, training them to identify and destroy drones that might attack their airports. And this is from the Times UK. Swiss police train eagles to attack drones near airport. Police in Geneva are training two young eagles to intercept and seize drones flying near the city's airport and other sensitive sites. The number of unmanned aerial vehicles in Switzerland has risen to nearly 200,000 in the past year. A drone nearly collided with an Airbus A330 at Zurich Airport in May last year. 30 such incidents were reported in 2016. The Swiss Transportation Safety Investigation Board said it was simply a matter of time before a drone and a passenger plane collided. But not! Not if you have your army of eagles. Speaking of eagles, by the way, did you, did you know who won the Super Bowl this last time? It was the Philadelphia Eagles. Ask me how I know. Ask me why I care. I do, actually. I, I care greatly. Geneva's regional police had recommended a trial to determine how effective the Eagles might be against rogue UAVs. Training began a few months ago, soon after the birds hatched. Wow. 
They don't even get a choice, man. They don't even get to choose their lives right out of the nest right away. They're put into they're like a like a little uh, peg put into a hole. That's what's happening. Wait, that sounds like me. That sounds like you. They hope that the birds will be operating by the end of the year. And and here we go with our next story. This one's a fun one. Actually, these are kind of related. One deals with viruses and one deals with bacteria. Killer nanoparticle targets superbugs for assassination. Those superbugs, those particularly nasty and sometimes fatal bacteria that are defying resistance faster than we can create it, may have finally met their match in the form of new nanoparticle developed by researchers at the University of Melbourne School of Two Chemical minutes. and Biomedical Engineering. From futurity.org, tiny specks of this mineral may fight off superbugs. Researchers have developed nanoparticles that can fight some of the most dangerous antibiotic-resistant bacteria. The work offers a way to fight infections at their source. The research could be an important step towards managing the threat of antimicrobial resistance. Andrea O'Connor, a chemical engineer by background and deputy head of the University of Melbourne School of Chemical and Biomedical Engineering, works in the field of biomaterials, implants, and tissue engineering. I'm not going to tell you what that means. you have to look it up. The researchers found that silenin, a mineral that humans require in their diets to boost immunity and aid metabolism, in the form of nanoparticles, can stop the growth of bacteria such as golden staph. The benefit of the nanoparticles that we've developed is they attack bacteria in multiple ways. There's, there's more here. Go to the show notes. I want to make sure I get to this last story. And if my brother calls me one more time while I have this show on, let me let me try and mute my phone for the last story. The look out viruses. This hairy nanoparticle has your number. Maybe they're not viruses. I don't get confused that. These nasty viruses that seem to get stronger every year, better watch out. They may have a hairy problem soon in the form of hairy nanoparticles created seconds. by Francesco Stalacchi, a materials scientist at the Ecole Politique, whatever, in Switzerland. It's in Switzerland. Uh, Francesco is a material. The, the particle he created is just five nanometers wide for, okay. Uh, the nanoparticles destroyed common germs like the herpes virus and human papillomavirus. Ten seconds. The first Triggers a range of symptoms, including cold sores in the mouth, the second is response, well, whatever. So there you have it. I have no more time to cover this. And you hear the beep, beep, beep. And you know what that means. That's all that we have today for headlines you may have missed. If you would like to read more about the stories we covered today, just go to isheadlines.com and find the show notes for February 28th, 2018, or check out the link to the show notes page in the description for both the Facebook live stream and the YouTube video, or go to iState.tv slash HO35. If you'd like to hear the audio only version, which is nothing but headlines, 20 minutes of headlines, nothing else, wait about two or three hours. And you should be able to listen to the show on iTunes and Stitcher by searching for iState. And rather than continuing to focus on or having to uh, do the search, make sure that you subscribe so you can just get it in your feed regularly, your podcast feeds. And don't forget to join me tonight on Is Daily Wednesday with the one true Niz. And that will be on the Liberty Principal Facebook page, which again is linked in the in the, the description for both the Facebook video and the YouTube video. Uh, tonight's show, I don't have a title for the show yet. However, I can tell you that the top story is going to be about the, uh, the Dems' efforts at, uh, I'm going to call it Common Sense Coup. Yeah, it's gonna, it might be called a Common Sense Coup. That's C-O-U-P. That might be the title of the show. We'll see. Anyway. That's on tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Be sure you tune in. As always, remember, those who need to control thoughts need to control news. 
Until tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is Paul Gordon of iState.tv saying, have a great rest of your day, fellow iStaters.